Good morning, good morning. How is everybody this fine Tuesday? I am just going to share this on my group. Give me one second. I am out of breath because <laughs> I ran upstairs um, to see what everybody was doing and I lost track of time. And then my sister's like, go downstairs, it's time. Hi, Paul, how are you doing? I don't know. I heard you received a parcel this morning from me. That was pretty quick. I think I have your delivery coming today. Good morning, Charlie. How are you today? How is everybody doing? We have a very cloudy kind of foggy morning going on. Hi, Min. Hi, Betty. And I know Dali's talking to my dad right now, but maybe she'll show up here soon. Oh, good, Paul. And it got there all in one piece. It was pretty quick. Um, did it through Candle Post, so I'm happy about that. So, um, let's see, what are we doing this morning? Um, <laughs> it's not that I was struggling with this one. It was, I really just wanted to... You know, we work with a lot of Pentar and we work with a lot of Stamperia. And I today just wanted to work with, um, I don't know, that's better. Hi, Dali. I'm trying to see my light here, which one's better. With it on or off? Hmm, I don't know. Hi, Janet. Yes, Dali is very poorly today. She's been poorly for the last few days. Um, she's got a really bad toothache. She's managed to have little fragments of her tooth um, embedded in her gum. So, yes, so um, not very well. And if you were here, I would make you soup and I would give you that haircut and hair color that you so badly want me to give you. But, um, wow, lots of people on already. So... Um, I was, as I was saying, we work with a lot of Stamperian Pentard and we also have our own line, those of you that know us, um, Dali is our designer extraordinaire. I get to pick colors and do it, uh, tell her what I would like in the designs, but Dali really is the genius and mastermind behind all this and does amazing um, designing of our pads. So today I thought, you know, why not let's play with shock art? Um, you know, it, it is our brand and um, we would love to get more out there and love to have the support. So today I'm working with our Dream of the Magical Things. That was the latest book that we put out. We have a few others. This was a digital download originally. Um, we got lots of requests to make it a paper pad for those that don't have a printer or can't do 12 by 12 or 8 by 8. So it became a digital pad, uh, a regular paper pad. So we'll definitely be using that. And um, hi, Judy, good morning. Um, we are going to be using Stamperia Stencil. It is KSD 289. Um, I love this stencil. One, it's got imagination written down the side here, which I love just using randomly. And I'm going to be using a single dream is more powerful than a thousand realities. And this stencil really speaks to me when I think of dream of the magical things. And I'm also going to be using the Stamperia FBF 005 um, die cut. And uh, I've used this die cut on a lot of projects. It's very popular, as have I the stencil. So these are being used today now i'm not going to use all these colors but i just wanted to show you um i don't think i've done a live where i've used stencil paste very much so i just wanted to show you the different colors of the stencil paste but i also wanted to show you um how these colors that we have work really well with this pad and i'm trying to look for a page where we got lots of different colors so we have for this these are pentart stencil paste so look at these gorgeous blues 
we have this gorgeous ultramarine and lilac how gorgeous are they so they work really well um, so this one one is called green one is turquoise um, so you can see how well these colors lend themselves to this paper pad and the blues are right there we have this gorgeous color it's called hollyhock i love this hollyhock i want to eat the hollyhock and hollyhock works really good with the pink hues in the book that you see and of course silver goes with everything we have this gorgeous vanilla color which works really well with all the vanilla colors in the pad and we have it's called black diamond and it's, this one's got they all have a little bit of a glimmer in them and it's more of a gray silver tone if you will this was a new addition it is brass is absolutely stunning so this works really well um this one is gold so always goes with the silver look at this color this is called yellow have you ever seen such a lovely yellow stencil paste so this works again um there's lots of yellow in the pad for this to work with so the last one is apricot and apricot goes with all these mellow tones that you see in this area so it is find it really interesting how well all these colors seem to work with the pad i am not going to use all these stencil paste colors um but i wanted to show you um how great they are and the other reason i wanted to show you all this stuff this morning is because i am going to use every single thing other than every single stencil paste as i said in my demo today which i um not quite sure what i'm doing but i'm gonna i'm gonna do it demo today and i'm just gonna let you know right now i know with the bird die we might only have three left i have a few stencils um, these i'll have to get more of dali but i'm gonna do just for today for those of you who are watching i'm gonna do let's see what shall i do should i do a little quick special what shall i do um okay i'm gonna go for it we are gonna do a 20 percent off you don't have to get all of it but but um yeah 20 percent off whatever you want okay that's it i'm gonna put this away before i change my mind so we have these things today i'm so excited i love 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 i'm looking at the colors here and i'm gonna probably go with the two purples today might do a bit of blue i don't know two purples i think i'm just looking at what i'm gonna be doing i'm gonna these are the colors i'm gonna work with today to go with the pad yeah i think these colors although blue might come in to the picture too but we shall see we shall see now there's a few things i want to talk about um also and then i'll do a flip through through the book for you guys okay but i wanted to get these out of the way also um first thing is tomorrow dali has a facebook live free online class for secret garden it's on memories paper art with uh tamara morton and i'm hoping you guys can join it will be 10 o'clock for us in canada six o'clock in the uk so hopefully we can all join and chat and have some fun thank you dali for doing that now those of you who know me before i get to the pad um i really wanted to share this with you because i have such a huge love for these uh, tea boxes um i had started um playing with tea boxes last year and this was my very first class it was um the alice in wonderland class and it was her little box of treasures how cute is that so this is and he belongs on here he's the little mold from the alice in wonderland and so i had played with this box and this class was so ever so popular um it's got so many cute yummy things in there um all speak to alice in wonderland so i had done this and then what happened about a month ago 
we were invited to a YouTube hub, Dali and I. Um, Dali and I were invited to Doors to Dream YouTube hub. And what happened was they basically sent us some products. So my products were a door, obviously, Door to Dreams YouTube hub, which you can watch mine and Dali's on our YouTube channel. And also it was a paper pad, but my paper pad was a baby paper pad. And I have not done a lot of work on, um, oh, thank you, men. I have not done a lot of work with baby stuff. In fact, I've done no stuff with uh, baby stuff. So this was my entry into, not entry, my submission for the Door to Dreams YouTube hop. So, cause it was a baby theme. I've got Twinkle Twinkle Star. This is a gorgeous stencil. You can just use the stars if you want. It's a Stamperia stencil. And then here was a door that they gave me. And then you can see the paper behind it. It's called Lullaby. It's absolutely, oh, thank you, Min. It's absolutely gorgeous. And then inside, I carried the ombre effect right through. So I was doing the ombre effect to match the papers they had given me. So you can see this one too, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And then this is actually a mold. And then these are actually molds too, the little shoes there, they're Stamperia molds. And then these are actually just little erasers from the kids store which I altered and painted. If you watch the live, you can see it. And then the moon behind there. So yeah, thank you guys, thank you. So I just love this. Um, as you guys know, I have a son, but um, he probably at this point would probably wanna give it to his childhood because he's too old for this. But I absolutely love this. And I was thinking of maybe putting my son's photo in here or something. But guess what? The reason I'm showing you this is because I have my new box ready and it's going to be a class on November the 28th. And this is by far my favorite. But then I say that every time I make something. So without further ado, this is my Winter Botanic by Stamperia Paper um, Christmas box. So here we go. How vintage is that? Now this is a great entry for November. Hi Terry. So look at this. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? So this is my new box to my box tea box collection. And wait till you see the inside. Look at this. You got a little forest scene. You got bells and berries. You got a lantern. You've got a let it snow. You've got, these are the same books that I used in the baby box, except that I've covered them with the vintage paper. And I've even given them little titles, Christmas carols, uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas, and a little thing that says story time. And then of course you got your vintage pickup truck with your tree in the back. So this class is, thank you, Janet. Um, this class is on November the 28th at Volcanic Hills Winery. And I have to tell you that I only have so many spots and I think I got one left because <laughs> I mentioned it. And um, so I think this one is, I think, already sold out. Um, I'd have to check, but you're going to be making all these little things and putting them in there. But how gorgeous is that vintage box? I really wanted to share this today. Thanks, men, and I'm glad you're coming to the class. Um, but this is a box we're going to be making. Take it out at Christmas, put it away. Look at those books. I just love, 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 love those books. Thank you, Jill. Okay. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Terry. Okay, so let's go back to what I'm doing today. I just had to show them. I'm so proud of my Christmas vintage box. Um, so we're working with Dream of the Magical Things. This was designed by Dali. Like I said, she's a designer extraordinaire and it really is dream of the magical things. So hi, girl. So a lot of the time, you know, you look, you might look at a pad and you think mm, this is really like mixed media style pad. What can I do with this? The possibilities for this are endless. Um, I just also want to mention this is Florana. Florana was one of my very first stamps that I did. So we have a stamp that matches that. Um, and also we have a rice paper that matches Florana. 
Um, so a lot of people say, what can we do? There are so many things that you can do with this mixed media paper. And I have a few samples that uh, one I did a live for quite a while ago. Uh, this was, I did the live when it was actually a digital paper. And then um, one, I made a box yesterday, which I'm going to share with you guys. Um, I really wanted to push my boundaries. I wanted to work with something round. Um, all the cutouts are ready to go for you guys. Look at that, all the little tags. Just absolutely gorgeous. So this is actually an 8.6 by 8.6 and it's 22 designs and I believe it's 220 GSM. So it's nice thick cardstock that can be mixed media done. And here are my samples. So this was a live I did, and this was actually just printed on copier paper. It was done with just my regular printer, just on uh, photocopier paper. And it was from the digital um, download. So this, was, this belongs in just my everyday kind of journal that I work in. Let's do a quick flip through. Um, I need to do a journal page. I haven't done one in a while. So I had done this for quite, I had done this a while. So I took two different sheets and uh, put them together. And then the project that I worked on last night, um, like I said, I wanted to kind of push myself. So I did something round. So I made this gorgeous round box. I just love this. Um, I chose the picture where she's kind of got her head down and she looks like she's dreaming with her, like, you know, when you just kind of days off almost. So she's right there. And here I took the tag from the book that says, follow your dreams, they know the way. And then you can see there's a clock um, going around with Roman numerals. And that for me was kind of like, you know, follow your dreams because time runs out. So we have to do everything we can, you know, while we, while we can. Thanks, Mim. So this was my box and I've just started and I plan on filling this up. Now, um, I've never made round cards. So this was, um, my plan. This is a round box and I'm going to fill it with round cards and they are all going to be very um, like quotes or sayings, um, stuff that I can look at almost like a gratitude box, if you will. And I can pull stuff out of here. Maybe if I'm having a bad day or I'm sad because Dali's tooth hurting, then I can pull out a, a little uh, card and just be grateful for whatever's written on it. So I've already started and these are all out of the book and this is me pushing myself to do round things. So the very first one, hi die, is time is an illusion. So this is a reminder to me, you know, we do one, have only so much time, but two, we need to take advantage of every moment and live in the now. So this is from the book and I've used three different pages for the three different palettes. And that's my first kind of gratitude card. And then my second round card was, I couldn't help myself. There's a card with an, uh, there's a page that has an eye on it. And um, thank you, Gloria. So of course I tagged it, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that is just to remind me, I need to see beauty in everything. I including pinks and purples, which I usually don't see beauty in. Um, and if you look, here's her eye here. And then this is like, you know, how you have it around your iris. This is my version of a real eye, believe it or not. Um, thank you. And it's got like little shaker things in it. Um, so this was my shake. And this one actually stands. So if I wanted to, I could actually stand that one right up. So this is what I've started. This is what I've been working on. I did this yesterday um, because I am so much grateful for a lot of things, you know, in my life, including you guys. And uh, so, yeah, I hope you like it. So this one's actually done as a card and then it matches my bedroom colors. So it was done as a card in case I want to put it up in my bedroom. 
And then this one was just done like a big coin um, because like I said, I might write some goals or I might write some, you know, sayings on here that mean something to me, you know, like appreciate quotes or time quotes whatever is appealing to me or maybe how I'm feeling that day or maybe when I pull out a card write down what I'm grateful for that day something good that happened that day so this is going to be my follow your dreams they know the way gratitude box I hope you guys like it and my little story um, behind it too so there we have it so this is my box that I made yesterday so today like I said, I'm going in a little bit blind. Um, I have these wooden planks that I have. Um, they're not on my website, but I have them. And I went from round totally to square. So I am going to work with this today. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this out. And basically what I did was I flipped through the book and I just kind of picked out what kind of spoke to me and I can tell you which one I used. Um, this is the one I used for the box, my round box. Um, so I use this one. I'm gonna use this one today because this has a lot of different colors in it. So that's what I'm going to use, just so you know. So I've done most of the prep work on it. So I'm just gonna talk you through that. So let's see. So what I have done is I took that page and what I've done is I have created little slats of paper which will all go on here like this because I didn't want a sheer covering. I really wanted these slats to show and to keep give it that wooden crate look. So I did those. I've done those already. So then oh, it's like a little jigsaw. So I'm just going to put them down like this. And then this is my last one. Now you'll notice that the last one seems quite bright compared to the rest. And it looks like that, you know, it's got no definition. So basically all I did was I just used the Distress Ink Black Suit. And as I was saying to you guys last time, I like to come around it first. Boy, I'm still out of breath. I need to get in shape from running up and down the stairs this morning. Mind you, I had a lot to talk about this morning, haven't I? So get your dark edge first and see it's already gonna make a difference. And then what I like to do is to come in and just gently come in off the sides. And now this will give us some really nice definition. And this is the Distress Ink by Tim Holtz uh, black suit. And anywhere else you want to put this, simple as that. But I wanted to keep one out for you guys so that you could see it. All the pieces that I have cut um, have already um, been um, wow, that sure shows up, doesn't it? Have already um, been distressed around the edges, so you don't have to watch me continue to distress these. Okay. Just don't like, you guys know I get a little bit picky. I like my stuff clean. Okay, that will do. So, the first thing that we're going to do, make sure that your jigsaw is all lined up. Does it go this way? Nope, I think it goes this way. Okay, so easy peasy. We're going to glue this down, but you see how um, the slats, you can see the slats better because you've come in a lot darker around the edges, whereas before you couldn't really see um, the slats suit not suit soot is that how you say it soot okay i'll poke the holes out after but um let's just get this glued down and people ask me a lot of time what kind of glue do you use i'm just using a craft wood glue 
Um, I find that this doesn't make the paper warp at all. And you can get this at any of your own hardware stores um, that you have. Okay. So this is the first piece down, but I want to show you how versatile this paper pad is. You've saw me make cards, you've saw me cover my journal book, and now we're going to make a gorgeous, gorgeous plaque. And look, all you did was take a page out of the book, a page that appeals to you. Some of these corners might turn up because I'm going too fast, not paying attention. Um, take a page that appeals to you. And then go for it you can create cards just imagine making a album with this um plaques whatever you will and the other thing that i really wanted um to do but i didn't get a chance to do was was this book really lends itself well to do all occasion cards because there's so many different colors in it and you can customize it whichever way you want oopsie daisy I've forgotten which one comes next. I think it was like this. Okay. Um, you can customize the cards. I, you, I even see with some of the pages, Christmas cards out of this, uh, especially like a shaker card, um, like I did, but more maybe write joy or peace or Merry Christmas on it with a die cut. I can definitely see that. Oh, okay, Paul. So, Oh, I've forgotten. Soot. Soot. Like mutt. But you see how all of a sudden an empty wooden plank has all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, has all of a sudden turned into this gorgeous, gorgeous um, plaque. I mean, you could leave this as is. I honestly, you could but I wanted to play around with the papers. I'm being stingy with my glue here. Okay. So. Oh no, why do I keep forgetting which way it goes? That's not right. Oh no, I think I did that wrong, did I? I have done that wrong. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? I think this one goes here. Here I go again. I think maybe this one goes here. Uh oh, I've done it now, haven't I guys? Okay, maybe we best just leave them as they are. That's what happens when you don't pay attention. I'm too busy talking. Okay, let's do it this way. I can tell that that one definitely goes here. Look at that. So maybe I just got that one wrong. Are you guys laughing at me? Or maybe I did have it right all along. I don't know. Either way, these papers, <laughs> these papers will work whichever way you put them down. See, Dali's designed these so you can't make a mistake. Okay, there we have them. They're a little bit off because I keep pulling them and playing with them. Okay, there we have it. Maybe they're not in the right order. Are you guys laughing at me? Yeah, that would probably help me. I could probably just actually pull it out the book and look at it, men. But it's glued down now. But either way, it's going to work. It's going to work. I will make sure it works. Okay, isn't that easy? That's it. We're done for today. <laughs> now, then what I did was... Dali has already um, cut, has cutouts in her book like this. Um, not laughing, they were fantastic. Uh, they do, don't they? Thanks, guys. Um, there's cutouts already that are square. So this was really easy. I have this gorgeous frame here. That was really easy. So again, the first thing that I'm going to do, I have these bits and bobs, is um, maybe do do a layout. Um, yeah, let's start on this side. And this was 
Oh, I think I showed the wrong bird dye, but this is a bird dye. I think I have the wrong one. This is just the Stamperia bird dye. So it's done out of the, um, thank you, Charlie. So it's done out of the same paper from Dali's pad. And then, see, look, I'm trying to save you guys having to be stuck with me. Then look at these flowers. Um, Dali has a really nice die cut um, for these flowers. So these, these flowers were all done with the papers from the pad. They're so, so cute. And here's another one. So just really, really cute. So I'm just going to um, play around. See, I was really good. I, I cut things up. And then I'm thinking you could probably put a photo of yourself in here or somebody and give it as a gift. That would be a really nice kind of like a keepsake um, to give to somebody. Um, I do have this butterfly and I'm thinking I'm going to put the butterfly there for now. And then I have this one piece of paper which I've kind of rounded edged and I am going to do something with it. I'm going to stencil on it with that gorgeous stencil. Um, so I just got to figure out which way it's going to go because I think the stencil is this way. So that's it. So let's go ahead. I'm trying to look at the colors in this and I see blues I was thinking of Frank Sinatra so now I see blue <laughs> I see blues and I see different colors so what that means to me is I should color the frame so it kind of matches some of those colors now it would be great to um, color the frame if I could find my paints here so I've got a few paints that I took out because I knew that they would be kind of work with this but you guys see where I'm going with this right how easy just put down the paper the paper works for you I've got a couple of die cuts I'm not liking that there I've got a couple of die cuts different die cuts um I'm still kind of sticking with dream up the magical things in my head um maybe bring the flowers down here I'm We'll see if I want the butterfly or not, because a picture in there would be gorgeous. I don't want to make it too busy. Um, so these were the colors I came up with. I'm out of the baby pink, hint, hint, uh, which is coming. So I was thinking maybe I'll take these two and make a mauvey color. And I've got some gray and I've got some blue. I do need my frame to stand out because uh, in a solid, more solid color, because it's going to get lost otherwise. And if you've got a photo in there, you want that photo to be able to have its own um, definitive space because you don't want it to get lost in everything that's going on. So I don't know. Let's mix some colors and see um, how we want to do that frame. Yeah, because that's all we can do. That's, you know, that's Facebook Live. You're just going to play around, right? Okay, so let's have a look. Do I have a little pot here? I thought I brought a pot here. Okay, I'm just going to first, I'm going to try and see if I can get that, that mauve hue. But you know what? I'm going to not do the mauve hue because it's more of a purple hue. And these are not purpley in my mind. But I do really love these two colors. So let's just see. Let's just see what it looks like. Because there's nothing wrong with us just playing, right? I'm quite enjoying doing these lives where I'm not planning like so much ahead. So proud of myself, so impressed. Okay, so let's try the grey first. I love the decor paints. Um, so this is what the grey looks like. See how subtle that is? Um, I'm just going to do a little bit more there. I just want to see what it's going to look like uh, around the frame. And this really lends itself well too because it's a chalky type paint. Um, therefore, it keeps that matte look. So 
Yes, I am loving that. I'm loving, loving, loving that color there because it's really helping um, bring out the dark tones in the back and the suit that I did. But I do want to see what that um, blue looks like. So let's just try a little bit of that blue. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it on the underside because I don't want to put it on the other side yet. So you could go either or. So I'll show you. It doesn't really matter, I'm noticing. You could go this color and keep it very shabby chicy. That works. Uh, or you could go this darker color. And I'm gonna go with the darker color. Uh, like I said, for me, it makes my frame stand out a bit more. So let's carry on with the dark color. Now, what you could do is also, you could um, bring in a little bit of that blue and give it more of a different hue. I don't know if you can see that. So I think that's what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna do the gray all over and then I'm gonna come in with some of the blue and uh, highlight it so got the best of both worlds there does that make sense guys what i'm trying to do lucky that this dries relatively fast so that helps you don't need a lot as you can see i've not had to drip, drip my uh, dip my brush in again okay Oh, nearly went for the blue pot there. And these blend really well. That's what I love about these decor paints. They blend really well. Okay, so that's a that's the grey done. And you can see how gorgeous it looks. Oh, you see that speckled look on the top there. But I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that blue. Tap a little bit off. And we're just going to blend in a little bit here. Just to give it some contrast so it's not so stark. And like I said, these blend really, really well. What to do is we've got too much grey on this now. Um, and I just go back in as it's drying to give it that nice blended look so there you have it now it's got kind of like a almost like a two-tony shabby look hi rita so that will go here so with the blue it's allowed me to push back some of that harsh gray so that is good i just need a little bit more blue here And what you can do is also um, come in and you can take some of that blue and you can also just um, highlight your sides just to bring in some of that color so you do have it. It's like an afterthought. So you can see it's starting to get that shabby look at the edges. Doing a Dali special here. This is what she does. This is her style. Just blend that color. Bring it in. Oopsie daisy. Just bring in that color at the sides, she says. I've missed a bit at the bottom because I pulled it off and then didn't put it down properly. And just see how gorgeous this blue here where I've put it down matches this blue here. So now our frame will all be tied in. Okay, well done. Hi, Laurie. <laughs> Thanks, Laurie. Okay, so there we have it. Now, I, I think I know what I want to do with this. I've already distressed this. So what I'm going to do, see, look how gorgeous that looks in there. See how those gray tones really play well 
really really well so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick this down and yeah so like I said I just practiced on the back that color so I'm gonna see if I've actually got some tape that might actually for now just do tape rather than glue and getting it everywhere let's just tape this down I don't work with tape a lot I'm always using glue so bear with me this is how you professionals do it and then I see you guys you tear it off like this There's one. There's two. Oh man, I'm not good with this tape thing. So used to using glue. Or we'll use scrapbookers are probably like, oh my goodness, it's taken her that long. I'm actually going to a class treating myself for the second time in the last two months. I'm actually gonna go learn how to put a scrapbook album together taught by my wonderful friend Gail. And yeah, I hope I don't disappoint. She'll probably be spending most of the time with me um, because most of the ladies there are already album makers. Okay, that one didn't stick down. So let's come in again. It still didn't stick down. Let's start on this side, shall we? There we go. Okay, that was painfully slow. I don't know which way is better, probably this way. The reason mine is blank at the back, because I printed the digital copy off, and I'll tell you why I printed the digital copy off. And you see how well that prints? The reason I printed digital copy off was because I've only got two of these books left, and I didn't want to deprive anybody from having one of these books. So yeah, I took one for the team, and uh, I gave myself a printout from the dish copy. How gorgeous is that? Thank you, Laurie. This is actually a book designed by my sister. Um, Dream of the Magical Thing. So look at that. See that already? See how nice that, that gray color we picked from the decor paint with the little hints of blue in it is working out? I love, love, love. Okay, so next step is um, I might raise this um it's all gonna depend these i've already got pop dots on so i might raise this to be just above the birdies and then of course i've got all my flowers but before we do that let's do some stenciling shall we so i cannot for the life of me find my stencil tape no stencil tape can't find it so i'm gonna have to use regular tape and let's go for it so this is my paper which is from the same book and i'm gonna put that here i'm just actually gonna see i'm not sure where this is gonna go yet but i'm leaning towards having the lighter hues at the top and then coming down darker because i don't want the dark with the dark bird there if that makes sense okay so I want <laughs> I'm gonna be a little bit um, I'm trying to I'm trying to not be greedy but I I think that one might be a bit light so I'm gonna put that one away for now I want to do like almost like an ombre effect with my stencil so we're gonna try this I've not tried this, but we're going to try it, okay? And why not today of all days? So, here's that stencil, a single dream. 
it's more powerful than a thousand realities so let's just place this down on here hope you guys can see this I just want to make sure everything's in the middle because that's just me and let's see how we can take this without it going too many places thank you Janet Yes, I will. I have one book left. You can have one, Min, of course. So let's try doing this and taping this here. Um, just because, like I said, I'm not quite sure how else to do this. Let's stretch that out. I think that should be good. I don't want to be pulling up copious amounts of tape afterwards. So let's go for it. This is like a trial. Look at that purple it's just absolutely gorgeous so we're going to try and do an ombre effect um i obviously used purple before so maybe take a little bit less off and let's come in with this whoops i'm catching it somewhere Okay, now I'm going to wipe that. And let's come in with this luscious silver, but I actually have a little piece here that I want to make darker. There we go. So then let's come in with this silver and I'm going to come from the bottom up on this. And you can go as thick as you want, and you can go as thin as you want, obviously. I think I've used this stencil so much, it's uh, one of my faves. Oh, proof is going to be in the pudding how this is going to turn out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just gently come into that purple like this. Because I'm trying to create that ombre effect, right? So I'm just going to take what I already have there and just gently bring it up. And we'll see what happens, right? It's all you can do. Now, I might want to just take a little bit of purple and just bring some back down into here to continue. Oopsie daisy, clean your stencil. I'm running out of my purple here, so I have to be a little bit stingier and just bring it down. Let's see what happens. Okay. So that's the purple ultramarine. And then this is the black diamond. Hi, Royette. Hi, Gloria. Okay. Oh my goodness, I'm scared. I don't like this tape thing, that's for sure. I can tell you that. Ooh, could have been a little bit better, but yes, I've got the ombre effect that I wanted, and that's what matters. We well, have to say that regardless, right? So what I'm going to do, because I don't have my pot here, I'm not going to waste time on um, cleaning this I'm going to wrap this in a baby wipe I was told that that works all these tips that everybody sends me okay so a single dream oopsie daisy so there we go a single dream and look at that ombre effect thank you Gloria single dream is more powerful than a thousand realities oh I love that effect so that works well because you got the light there if you can see that dream do you see how it changes two colors if you can't, I'm sorry. Okay, now let's bring this back. And let's just give this a quick blast, just for the sake of things. Okay, now let's start our placement while this dries. So, um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted that butterfly in there. I do know, sorry butterfly, I didn't mean to throw you. So we'll put that there. Um, 
And this I'm going to be putting here. So I know that. And I quite like this flush. And then with these, I think I will raise this. So let's put some, let's put this down first. I'm just taking the things off the back of the now, if I was to do this again, I think this, I would, I don't think the camera is picking up the light, but from here it's very, very light. But if I was to do this again, I might just pick a different, um, might do the two purples for the ombre effect. Okay, let's pop this thing up. Um, I'm not sure, I might double, do a double pop on it. I don't know yet. We'll see. Double pop, I mean double up on my tape at the back. I'm using my own made up language here of how I'm doing things. Okay. No, I'm really throwing things around today. Okay, let's do that. I'm going to be careful now because I've taken the backs off that I stick it down where I want it to be. But like I said, you don't have to do much to this. It, it looks pretty cool. Uh, the papers are uh, really cool on their own. Okay. This is so not kind of the techniques that I do but I am loving them nonetheless so if we kind of um, let me see and you can change signs around it doesn't matter no so let's put that about here so that is nice and raised and then we can work with our little flower display here and then I won't, I mean, I don't want to keep you guys with my little flower display, but I will show you, normally this is how I go about it. First of all, I'm just going to, these are all been distressed and I'm just popping up the petals like this. one here a little baby one there is one that goes um in this one but i'm not going to use it um because i have other plans so i'm just going to use my trusty glue here you know my favorite glue um the 3d glue and then what i do is i just have a little skewer and then i just layer the flowers in like this and then i just take my skewer line it up and then i just pop it down but you get the idea i'm sure you guys have done this part lots of times now, so there are those flowers there. I won't um, spend time putting the other ones down because you guys get the idea. But these would probably go down here somewhere like this. Or you don't have to have all of them. Um, I mean, you can do them whichever way you want. You can have little baby ones here. Or you can, you know, just have them around your space there. But you know what I am going to do is, um, and I should have done this before I put those down, but that's okay. Because it's never too late. Um, I have this gorgeous butterfly stencil um, by Deli. And this is where I'm going to use my hollyhock. Because I really want to use the hollyhock. Oh no, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I am going to um, use my lilac. 
because I wanted to use my lilac and I didn't use it. So lilac is a little bit lighter. So let's use this one. And let's just place a few random butterflies, shall we? Look at that color. So let's place a few butterflies. Oh no, oh no, no, look, look, look what I did, look what I did, look what I did. Bad, bad child. This is what happens when you start improvising and doing things. So, have no fear. I know what I'm doing. This was just to show you how easy it is to clean off this paper. See, you can't even tell that I was on there. It was all done intentionally. So let's do this and let's pay attention, shall we, Pip? It's one of those days. It's one of those days. Okay, let's do this again. And let's pay attention when we're taking things off, shall we? I did it again. I moved it slightly. There you go. How gorgeous is that? And then you can do a couple of little ones. See how cute they are? How cutesy they are. Let me see which other ones. I want to do a baby one up there too. So let's come and do this baby one up here. I will show you a cute close-up of these gorgeous butterflies. And I just wanted to do a few and apparently three or five is the way you go when it comes to um, doing composition, so I'm told. Okay, so this stencil too can go in with the baby wipe. Keep it nice and moist. And let me show you how gorgeous that purple is and how well it ties into this. I'm all over the shop today. So have a look at that. Look at how gorgeous that little butterflies are. Do you see them? There's one in the corner. There's one here. There's one. Hi, hippie chick. There's one there. So really, really pretty. So I'm glad I did that. Now, having said that, this one's going to get quite covered up with this one. So that didn't make any sense at all. <laughs> oh, dear. What's wrong with me today? So now I can't tuck it. I can't avoid it. So that one will get covered. Not a big deal. I will come in and put another one at the bottom somewhere. Dali's probably uh, wet herself by now watching me. So let's do that composition there. Let's then... Um, the other thing that you can also do is take your decor paint that we were playing with and you can further um, bring in that gorgeous colors of your when we did the frame and you can also just highlight these at the tips too just to give it that gorgeous color and you see that so you're just tying everything in Okay, so I'm not going to spend time doing that. Just wanted to show you that you can also just do that. Bring in some of that blue color from everywhere. Okay. I'm a little bit lost today, I think. Let's put this here. I do like that there. We're going to put this here. And last but not least, <laughs> I am going to try... I've got a few um i've got this gorgeous purple which will actually offset the purple in there so what we're going to do is we are going to use our 3d pen and we are going to give this a gorgeous gorgeous um center so i'll glue these later but i'll do the centers so you can see because these are self-leveling, so you don't have to worry about leaving these behind. Okay, so now you can take that 3D pen, oopsie daisy, got to be careful of that butterfly. And you can also introduce it um, on your work, because what this will do, this will just tie everything in nicely. 
Okay, and you can go wild with your um, the 3D pen dots. It's entirely up to you. There's so many different colors. They will dry in a dome just like that. My butterflies wet, so I'm a little bit cautious to put this down here, but this would go basically like that. And then the final touch that you want to come in with, um, you can use diamantes that match. You might want to put some diamantes somewhere. Um, the other thing that you can do is that you can get some ribbon. I've got some ribbon here. Let me see if I can't cut that off. And remember the two holes at the top. So instead of putting in your cord um, that we have, which is very natural looking, was this. So you could still use it, but I would probably come in and do some like a purple ribbon behind it like this. And purple is a color I've gone with, but really at the end of the day, there are so many colors you can go. Um, but so it would be something like this. <laughs> what am I doing? I'm struggling today, aren't I? Okay, there you go. I think you guys know what I was trying to do. Um, but I don't want to keep you guys over the hour. But there you have it. A gorgeous, gorgeous um, layout. Thank you guys. A gorgeous, gorgeous layout. Um, I really loved it. I'm actually, um, I told Ali, I'm always scared to open our pads and go into them because they are so mixed media like. And um, I never know where to start. But you have this gorgeous piece here. Just, I mean, look at that. That's just absolutely gorgeous. And you can keep it light. I gave it more of a darker tone, um, but you can definitely keep this light. And the stencil paste, um, I love the 3D purple pens work so well with this. Um, I just love them. Thank you, men. And the stencil paste, I mean, the colors of the stencil paste work really well. So we have that. And then I just wanted to show you again, um, you can do so much with this book. We have the cover that I did. This was from the digital one. This is my journal cover um, that I did. And then I have started a gratitude box. So that's at least what I call it. My gratitude box, follow your dreams, they know the way. And then I've used one of the uh, paper pieces out of there that resonate with me. And here I've used the little diamante, same flower dye and i've covered it all over and i'll tell you i'm gonna see if i can't find um aged mahogany was the distress oxide i used which i thought went really well and lends itself well to this so and then these i've started my gratitude cards or my cards that just make me think uh contemplate what life is all about so time is an illusion and really push myself to make round cards and then this is an actual card beauty is in the eye of the beholder and as i mentioned earlier you've got the eye and then you've got your iris and everything um so yeah i hope you enjoyed today's little class <laughs> albeit i was flying by the seat of my pants um trying new things i hope you enjoyed it and you got lots of um inspiration and last but not least thank you for hanging out with me to see all my gorgeous boxes and like i said this class is november 28th but i think it's sold out i will have to check on the numbers oh thank you so much sandra and there you have it okay guys i hope you had fun today thanks for hanging out with me thank you Dali. thanks for hanging out with me um thank you laurie Thanks for hanging out with me. I want you guys to have a wonderful, wonderful day. Min, I'll put a book aside for you. And uh, Dahlia, I might need to get some more in from you. And Dahlia, I hope you're feeling better, but I'm probably going to come up and have a cup of tea and come talk to you. And like I said, this is not picking up. Um, maybe if I put it into the light here, you can see it's actually um, a lot lighter than... Um, that it seems to be. So maybe if I put some light here, you can see it's um, very much lighter.
I think just the camera is giving it a very, very dark look. So in a momentarily, you'll be able to see how light that actually is. There you go. So love, love, love this project. And I just want to show you one last thing, how much I love the 3D pens. Look at them doming up there in the corner. Just gorgeous. Okay, guys, I'm going to get going. I have some parcels to post and things to do. I love, love my... Um, thank you, Gloria. Love, love my Tuesday Facebook. And I love having you guys here. So we'll chat to you guys later. If you have any questions or want to know anything, let me know. The die um the book what one that we have left i'll have to get more from dali the stencil that i used a single dream and then also the stencil paste there are all um 20 um percent off just today just for you guys who are watching and then you can also take a look as dali has mentioned Tamara Mortem is our memories paper art and Dali's doing her free online class there tomorrow called The Secret Garden, which is absolutely stunning. And um, Tamara Morton did actually an album using the Dream of the Magical Things um, book. And it's a gorgeous, um, I think it was a chest album. It's absolutely gorgeous. So she used the book in there. And it was just absolutely phenomenal. So go check that out. I'm hoping most of you already are part of that group because Dali will be there tomorrow. I'm planning on being there in the next week or so. Um, so that's it, guys. Thank you so much. I feel like I've had too much tea or coffee this morning because I'm rambling on. My dad said I was giving him a headache this morning because I talk so much. And... Uh, <laughs> we had we had fun and my little little sister's like no you two are giving me a headache so that was fun anyway enough about that have yourselves a wonderful day and i look forward to seeing some of you really soon and uh, take care be safe and take care of each other and i hope i've inspired you and maybe you guys can make your own plaque or your own gratitude box okay love you guys bye